previous session we were discussing about how to create a um, or how to design an integration which call a custom report we started with workday in which is the starting point of the integration and in workday in uh, you can add the launch parameters or if you need any services in your integration you can define those in workday in and our example has to call a custom report and to call the custom report we have workday out rest component and in that we have to set the property extra path okay and it says which report it has to call and after calling the report the output will be sent to the XSLT component and we have written XSLT which transform the output of the custom report and finally uh, we use the store component which can store the uh, that information or data as a file okay in today's session we are going to discuss about message flow how the data flows uh, in the integration and we also discuss about mediation message mediation context variables properties ml we will discuss these and then we discuss about how to add the launch parameters to our integration and while discussing how to add the launch parameters we take the example of a custom report which has the prompts okay and uh, at the time we discuss how to add launch parameters to the integration and how to read those launch parameter values inside the integration okay let me start with this message flow mediation message context etc so yes here what happens is whenever you launch the integration the integration processing starts at workday in component whenever you launch the actual processing starts at the workday in component and what happens is when the processing starts the assembly runtime see if you guys are familiar with the java.net in java we have jvm java virtual machine if it is a .net we have uh, i forgot that sentence like those help you to run the application java virtual machine is a virtual platform uh, where all the Java executions happens okay and coming to workday studio assembly when you launch the integration assembly runtime it takes care of integration execution whenever you launch the integration this assembly uh, runtime what it will do is it will create an object it will create an object called mediation context and after creation it will place all the information that is required to process to process our the information which is required to execute this integration will be placed inside that mediation context object whenever we launch the integration the processing starts at workday in component and the assembly runtime who is responsible for running this integration it will create an object called mediation object and it will place all the information that is required to execute this integration inside that mediation context we generally refer this uh, mediation context as a context either context or mediation context is same okay and which information will be placed inside that so the mediation context contains three items one is mediation message and another one is variables and another one is properties whenever it create the mediation context inside that it will place the assembly runtime place three items one is mediation message and another one is variables and another one is properties what is this mediation message 
the mediation message uh, we also call it as message it's nothing but actual data that has to be processed it is the actual data that has to be processed assembly runtime process the data the in the form of messages whatever the data we have to process okay uh, the assembly runtime actually process that as a mediation message so remember whenever i say message that is nothing but the data that we are processing if you take this example call report what this component will do this component will call the report okay and it will place that output of the report inside a mediation message because that is the data that we have to process if you go to the advanced okay i will show you see this is them uh, what is this? sorry i'm sorry whenever we use this component this will call the report and it will place the output of this component inside the mediation message because that is the data that we have to process okay now come to this we have observed it when we launch the integration in the output file we have some empty result okay today i'm going to show that so if you take this xslt in earlier session i said this component will receive the output of this component and apply the xslt on that send the transform data to this component okay now if we take this component here we have two properties input and output input and output what is the input message what is the output message when i say message see i said the xslt will receive the output of this component as the input and apply xslt and send the transform data to this component and when i see the properties of this component the input is showing as message by this i can say okay this component is call the custom report and place the output of that inside a mediation message and for this component the input is a message so both are same okay so what happens is like this the actual data that has to be processed will be placed inside the mediation message and the assembly runtime whenever it create the mediation context object it also create the mediation message object it will create the mediation message object and it will place whatever the data actual data we have to process it will place inside the mediation message object and this mediation message will be placed inside the mediation context so it will basically creates two objects one is mediation context and mediation message the mediation message object will be placed inside the mediation context and along with that it also create variables and properties assembly runtime it will create variables or properties if required or later if you required you can create assembly runtime will create the variables and properties whatever it needs along with that in integration if you need a variable or property you can also create that and you can create and those variables and properties which you create are which are created by the assembly runtime they will be placed inside the mediation context we understand mediation message holds the data that we have to process then what are these variables and properties variables are used to store the a uh, large amount of temporary data 
okay large amount of data if you want to maintain that large amount of data temporarily we use variables example you have the mediation message you want to store it in or you want to store it for later use you can use variable or your integration is the reading an input file what you can do is you can read that input file you can place that content of that file inside a variable in simple it can be used to store large amount of data temporarily you will store it in a variable and later wherever you need you can again read from this variable and you can use that okay uh, when i develop designing integration it will be clear but as of now remember that next properties in simple it, it will be used to store this simple data like if you want to maintain any data outside of the integration you can use properties example uh, uh, you want to read some launch parameter I mean there is some dependency when I design the integration I can explain this better but as of now uh, just understand this can be used to store this simple information or if you are familiar with the programming you can use the prop I mean you can relate with a variables primitive data types integer boolean string date so like that properties can be used to store such simple primitive type data when we design the integration uh, it will be clear properties and variables okay now what happens is whenever you launch the integration it will create both the integration mediation context object inside that mediation message variables and properties and later this mediation context object will be sent to the next component with the help of connectors we are connecting the components inside the integration so once the execution of this component is over then control will be sent to this component and then control will be sent to this component when I say control that is nothing but the mediation context information when I say mediation context inside that obviously we will have the mediation message the actual data that we have to process so the data starts at work in component and flows through connections finally we use some out outbound components our example store component we have used the store component to store this information as a file and we have few other out components whatever the data you receive here you will process that and finally you will send it to the required endpoint using HTTP out or FTP SFTP like how we have different delivery methods in EIB here we have the components you can use these components or you can use the store component or any other out components to send the data to the outside of the integration now So the same again so properties and variables so now the question is how can I declare a variable and how can I declare a property and how how can I read the value from a property or variable and how can I use that in the integration if you if it is a java dot net generally what we do is uh, we write these statements if you want to declare a variable you will do like this int a equal to 10 something like this int b equal to 20 and sometimes we will write the expression into c equal to a plus b like this we write these statements <coughs> if i want to write such statements in workday studio how can i write 
which language do I have to use here? Here we use a language called MWell. Okay, in Workday Studio, we use an expression language called MWell. We use this language to write the expressions. There we call it as statements. Here we call them as expressions. Okay, let me go to because uh, guys, as this is, as we have the Workday certification material, I didn't prepare any Word documents. Okay, so let me go to that ML page. Yes. So ML is an expression language uh, mainly for the applications, Java based applications. Okay, if you want to know more about the ML, you can uh, go to this page. And it is an expression language and uh, we use this expression language in Workday Studio to write the expressions. Example, uh, you have used the sequence generator. In yesterday's session, I was talking about the different services. Sequence generator. Assume I need a sequence generator in my integration. So I define this service here and I configure this sequence generator in the integration means once the deployment is over I will connect to the tenant and I will configure this sequence generator in the tenant now how can I read that value how can I read that value and how can I use that value inside my integration So to read that value, to store that value temporarily in some property and use that property wherever we need, we have to write the expressions like statements. We have to write the expressions or statements. And for that, we use ML. Okay. And what happens is this workday runtime or workday uh, already provided few inbuilt ML variables. Point number one, we use ML to write the expressions. And two, Workday provided few inbuilt ML variables. Few inbuilt ML variables which can be used in our integrations. One is context. So assume you want to read some information from the mediation context inside your integration somewhere you want to read uh, some information from the mediation context for that there is an inbuilt variable called context indices stands for integration system you want to read some integration configuration inside your integration you can use the ML variable launch parameters okay your integration has to assume okay your integration has to get some input from the user you are building some integration and this integration has to get some input from the user so how do we do that Okay, now let me make it simple. In previous example, we called a report. We called this report and uh, we transformed that data. That, that report doesn't have any prompts. That report doesn't have any prompts. Now assume you have a rep another report. Let me open a report. Now assume from your studio integration, you have to call a report which has the prompts. I 
I have a I have a report advanced report and when I try to run the report it is asking for the prompts without pro providing the values to these prompts I cannot run the integration now if I want to call that report from my integration what I have to do first I have to add the launch parameters I have to add the launch parameters and then read the value of the launch parameters means whenever user try to run the integration the integration will ask for the values launch parameter values user will enter those values and you have to read those values inside your integration and store those values and use wherever you need so now the question is how can I read the values for that what they in provided an inbuilt ML variable called LP launch parameters your integration has the launch parameters and if you want to read those you use LP launch parameters message you want to read some information from the mediation message you will use this variable we have parts props variables we will discuss about this later now proper props nothing but properties you want to declare some variable in your integration we use this props you want to declare some variable you use where's so these are the inbuilt ml variables and we use these variables in our integration for dynamic configuration like to read the launch parameters or to read the attributes or maps or to declare variables or properties or to read the sequence generator etc okay so we will discuss more when I start designing the integration this will be clear because as I have been mentioning there is some dependency between uh, topic to topic in studio so I'm not giving the low-level details this is just high-level information okay so just remember mediation context and mediation uh, mediation context object will be created when the processing starts and inside that mediation or uh, message and variables and properties will be stored and the control flows from one component to another component okay and second to you access the variables or properties or to write the expressions we use an expression language called ml expression and workday delivered few inbuilt ml variables which help you to or which help for the dynamic configuration okay remember up to this now when we start this example it will be clear we are going to cover all these variables properties ml in our example now let's discuss about launch parameters how to add the launch parameters to our integration and before that what is the purpose what is the purpose of using launch parameters and how to add those launch parameters and how to once you have the launch parameters how to read those values in our integration okay now before that let me open some EIB outbound integration okay and before that yes just now we have seen this report we have a custom report and this custom report has prompts high data and supervisory organization and uh, we cannot run the report until we provide the values to this now what we have done is we have developed an integration yes there is an EIB outbound integration there is an EIB outbound integration with this name and this EIB outbound integration is calling the report studio 2 it is calling this report and this report has the prompts 
okay the eib outbound which we develop it is calling a custom report which has the prompts now let's see what happens when i try to run the integration eib outbound integration actions integration launcher schedule just click on ok when I try to run the EIB outbound which has means uh, when I try to run the EIB outbound which is calling a report which has the prompts see automatically those prompts are highlighted here those are prompted here this is schedule or launch integration page and here those report prompts are populated as launch parameters and here you provide the values let me give some values <coughs> so high date and supervisory organization the functionality of that report is the report will return the details of the worker whose hire date is greater than or equal to 11 2017 and who belongs to this supervisory organization that is the purpose of the report and when i use that report inside the eip outbound and when i try to launch that integration those are automatically populated here and until you uh, give the values uh, proper values okay it will not allow you to run the integration okay. now i have given the values and let me run so what we have observed if you call in report which has the launch parameters I'm, I'm sorry let me frame like this okay if you if i call an integration which is calling a report which has the prompts those prompts are populated during running the integration but it will not happen in workday studio by default those prompts will not be prompted in workday studio due to that what we have to do is if you want to call such a report which has the prompts what you have to do is you have to add the launch parameters as it is not prompting you have to add launch parameters though for those prompts and read the values and use those values while calling the report this is the process so first if you want to call a report which has the prompts what you have to do is you have to add the launch parameters and then read the value of those launch parameters and use those values inside the integration okay not only to call the report okay you have an integration which needs some information from the user then also you will add the launch parameters okay so and to read the launch parameters we already have lp which is a workday delivered uh, ml variable now what i am going to do is i am going to add the launch parameters to my integration instead of updating the or modifying the existing one what i have done is when i have free time i have created this example i have added a workday in component i have added a workday in component and i have added a report service the same thing what we have done earlier i have added a report service and i am calling this report workday studio 2 this has the launch parameters and then i am calling that report from the workday outrest component and then xslt and finally store component and we are familiar up to this now 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the additional configuration like adding launch parameter reading those launch parameter values and use those values while calling the report if you want to add the launch parameters come to workday in component and here you can add the launch parameters okay now if you want to add a launch parameters you have three options one two three one is add simple type parameter the launch parameters are three types one is simple type and another one is reference type and another one is enumeration okay the first one is simple type what is this simple type and what is this reference type go to this report this is the report let me try to run the report it is a custom report and run I'm trying to run the report okay these two are the prompts and I have to add the launch parameters for these prompts and when I try to add the launch parameters it shows three types one is simple type another one is reference type another one is enumeration type okay which type I have to add I have two prompts so I have to add two launch parameters and which type of launch parameter I have to add okay if you take the high date the user can select any date the user can select any date here there is no restriction that the user has to select this date uh, there is no restriction that the user has to select the date that is already exist in workday so no such a restriction so such things falls under high date sorry simple type okay to get the clarity let's talk about this supervisor organization okay now let me ask this one can I select any any or can I type any text here under supervised organization can I select a supervisory organization which doesn't exist in the tenant hello uh, yeah yeah can I select a supervisory organization which doesn't exist in the tenant yeah you can uh, Dinesh Jagdish I don't think so okay let me ask this one uh, you are terminating a worker you are terminating a worker and you have to select a termination reason so in that case can I select any termination reason or the reason which is already defined in workday the reason should come from that populated uh, window whatever the drop down hmm. where, yes, yes. right from where these values are coming the populated values will come that is coming from the main you know somewhere in the system you have to maintain those values that means you can only I mean when that field type is multi select or single select or drop down you can select the values or instance that is already exist in the tenant you cannot select whatever the text you need right yes so if you take this supervisor organization here I can select a supervisor organization that is already created in the tenant I cannot select something which I want see it is saying there is no supervisor organization with this name what if I say something ABC yes there is a supervisor organization with this the point here is the supervisor organization this is a reference type this is a reference type that means you it is this field 
actually referring the data exist in the tenant supervisory organization or company call center workers so nothing but the instances of a business object you cannot select any you can only select any of the one which are already defined in workday and i mean in simple this field is referring the data exist in the tenant and when i have to add the launch parameter for such prompts or fields i have to select a reference type for others i select the simple type and let's start with this one let me select this add simple type parameter when i select this one here it is asking for the name okay i'm going to add that type can you see boolean date date time number text if you want to ac accept any one of this any of this data type you will use simple type from the user as an input you want to uh, get some date or from the user you want to get some number as the input or some text or some boolean true or false information then you will add the simple type launch parameter is this clear now at least if you need some true or false information or some date or date time or number or text then you will add this simple type launch parameter if you see this report high date is what is the type of this field date so i can select simple type launch parameter i will select this one and here i will select the type as date because i need the date time and give some name high date because i want to get the high date you can give any name okay there is no restriction that you should use the same name as the prompt name there is no such restriction but for our understanding i'm giving high date and this is the date and if you want to give any default value you can do that here you can give any default value if you don't want to give ignore and if you want to make this launch parameter as mandatory use this one required then this launch parameter will become mandatory launch parameter okay save this now what i have done is i have added a launch parameter of type date and the name of the launch parameter is high date now if i deploy this integration and then if i try to launch the integration then it will display this launch parameter and it will not allow me to run or execute the integration until i give the or provide the value to this launch parameter because i made it as required and later we will add the launch parameter for supervisory organization also okay but before that let me explain how to read this value okay in workday in i have defined the launch parameter now i have to read this value okay how can i read this launch parameter value inside the integration using lp launch parameter this is workday delivered ml variable i can use this one and what i want to do is i want to read this value of this launch parameter and i want to store it in some property now in simple i want to write an expression to read this launch parameter value and to write the expressions we use ml language so the next question is where can i write these expressions for that there is a component called eval common like common or common components 
there is a component called eval okay so what i'm going to do is instead of connecting directly this work day in and calling the report here somewhere here i want to write an expression which read the launch parameter value and again the eval the component which i'm talking it's a mediation component so place inside the async mediation okay. how we have used the transform use the async mediation and inside that just select this we have a component called eval so select this one eval and this component can be used to write the expression I'm, I'm naming it like this read LP launch parameter values so I'm going to use this component to read the launch parameter values so what I do is after this I want to execution to come control to come to this component and here I want to read those launch parameter values so how can I add come to expressions come to expression and plus okay to write an expression plus use this symbol and here write the expression okay, it's like see the syntax is almost like writing an statement Java statement okay so what is the component sorry what is the ML where LP stands for launch parameter so simply type LP and control space after that use control button plus space so con LP see launch parameters helper select this one under dot dot means it's like calling the methods after that press dot and again control space it gives a lot of methods it gives a lot of methods so using sorry. Uh -huh. sorry can I interrupt for a second <clears throat> so this language is proprietary to to uh, workday uh, no or it's a third party and it's and, and and is the documentation for that language in that website that you mentioned? Uh, yes. So it's not a uh, property of Workday. Okay. It's, uh, see, uh, the third party one. Okay. And here you have, you can Google it. And uh, this is the URL. Here you can um, learn more about the ML expressions. Okay, the document name is Advanced Studio Part 1 and the page number 63. Okay, this is the URL. Okay. See, it's like writing this statement. Let me finish that, then you will get the clarity. LP colon dot and a lot of methods are there. So, using any one of these methods, you can read that launch parameter value. And what is the type of the launch parameter we have added for higher date? Simple type. So there is a method called dot get simple data. So there is a method called get simple data. And this can be used to read the launch parameter of type simple okay, I will use this one and here I will give the label of my launch parameter what is the label or name of the launch parameter high date so high date when I write this one what this expression will do is this expression will read the value of a launch parameter with this name and this launch parameter is of type simple so the method name is get simple data and name of the launch parameter let's see do we have any other method get get date so you have this one 
so you can also give it right get get date and use high date okay this method will also return now this expression will read the launch parameter with value of the launch parameter with this name high date I want to store this somewhere and we already discussed to store such simple uh, data we use properties so write the properties okay how can I declare a property using props props this is the syntax props and here give the name of your property so give some name so let's say I'm using high date and inside that I want to store this value write the expression like this see why I didn't write the properties earlier is let's say I want to write like this some ABC equal to LP dot C if you press control space you don't get any help that's why first I have written the expression see now I'm getting the help I'm getting the help I'm writing this expression and I'm using control X and then declare the property and then store like this okay this was the question over here mm -hmm. So I understand the get data or get simple data and what is the purpose of uh, you know the props higher date equal to LP get data what is that right good question suppose if I don't use this one if I don't use this one let's say okay we understand this expression can be used to read the launch parameter value of launch parameter with this name understand I need this value around five to six time inside my integration I need or I need this launch parameter value around at six to seven places inside my integration so what I have to do every time I have to write this expression right yeah okay so you may ask me okay to avoid that to avoid writing this expression six to seven times I'm storing this value inside a property and I will use that property value inside my integration okay now you may ask me okay what is the difference yeah that's what huh. okay yeah. the difference the point is let's say what is the name of the launch parameter now I read it okay suppose due to some enhancements we have to rename this one we have to use hide instead of high data I have to use some other na name launch parameter name start date okay uh -huh, start date so if I use this one if I change the name and if I use this expression at how many times are sorry at how many places I have to change this label wherever you use everywhere whatever uh -huh right so how difficult it would be so instead of if I store this in some property if I store this some in property and uh, wherever I need I will read this use this property instead of writing this expression everywhere I will use this property and if I change the name of this launch parameter to something else it's just a one time one place I'll just change it here and my property I don't have to change my property name right I will, yeah. I will keep this property name unchanged but at one place if I change the label name it will reflect in the entire integration maintenance got it yeah oh, go ahead yeah I think I understood but you know yeah see the main reason is if you don't store it in a property and if you directly uh, want to use this expression the main problem maintenance okay in future if you change the label of the launch parameter everywhere wherever you use this expression you have to change there that is maintenance issue 
Okay. Okay, got it. So in that case, if you assign it to property, then mm. there is no need to change everywhere. Only change mm. over here, it will automatically it is, replace. As the launch parameter name changed, we change the the launch parameter name or label in this expression. Okay. Got it. And we will keep using the same property name. That is one. And second thing is the gen best or general practice is okay. We uh, declare or we write all the expressions, most of the expressions before actually uh, executing the actual logic. Okay, so again, the maintenance, okay, whatever the expressions we need, we write all the expressions at the beginning of the integration. One advantage is maintenance again, and if you ask me, hey, how is the maintenance or something? So let's say some issue occurred and you are debugging the integration before going here before actually uh, debug the code at this time okay if you have all the expressions at once what you can do is you can see all the values of these expressions instead of go and debug at every point See here you can find whether the launch parameter values are properly read or the values of variables are properly set. What is this value? So is the issue occurred due to that null point or such things? Okay. We haven't, I mean, we haven't started discussing ex uh, exception handling. We haven't started debugging. So at that time, I will give you more uh, scenarios or reasons for having uh, writing code like this if you are familiar with the programming you will understand by this time if you are new to the programming yes when I explain about the debugging or uh, uh, exception handling I will explain you about this so here what I have done I have read the uh, launch parameter value I'm storing inside this property now I have to use this property or, or I have to pass this property value while calling the report. This is the component where we are calling the report. And here what I have to do is when I have such a report with launch parameter while calling the report I have to pass this property value. Now the question is how can I pass the value? Okay, for that, let me open that EIB outbound example again. Let me go to that integration event. So we have observed whenever we launch EIB outbound, which is calling a report which has the prompts, those report prompts are populated as a launch parameter we have observed that and we have given the value for those launch parameter we run the report and if you come to the integration event if you scroll down here you can see the values that we passed while launching the integration and what happens is when you pass these value for these launch parameters and when you run the integration the integration will pass these two values to the report prompts high date this launch parameter value will be assigned to the high date prompt and the launch parameter this supervised organization launch parameter value will be assigned to the supervised organization prompt so these values will be sent there and the report will be called and how the request would be is like this report URL when you when you run the integration this integration <coughs> created a report URL and call that report let's try to understand this see up to this one part this is the report URL if you see the initial one is connection string up to here connection information so whatever we have this is the name of the tenant this is our tenant name 
and j banks this is the user name this is the report name connection string tenant name user name and report name and the report which we are calling it has prompts and how integration or how we pass the values to those prompts is as a query string we pass the prompt values as a query string okay whatever you have after the question mark it is a query string okay first one is high date see if you have more than one query string they will be separated by the and symbol high date and another one is supervisory organization and another one is format while developing the eib i have selected this simple xml format hope you remember in data source after selecting the custom report we have an option to select the format format of the output i have selected simple xml so that information is passed as one of the query string and this report has two prompts one is high date and another one is supervisory organization so when we call that report from the eib outbound integration it populated the web launch parameters for those prompts and whatever the you values user pass those values are sent to the report with the help of query string and if i have to do the same thing in the studio integration i have to construct this url i have to construct this url and this is a component which call the report and we have observed whenever you in extra path simply what you do is you will select the report alias so i uh, have this is the report alias and whenever i selected this one it automatically entered this text okay this expression this expression represents up to this the query string tenant name user name and report name up to this and whatever the query string we have you have to construct you have to construct now how can i construct question mark you can have any order okay there is no rule that you should follow this order let me start with format xml see format question mark and then i have used format xml and as i have to pass another launch parameter what is that query string i'm using and so whatever you write after question mark this is called as query string and we have three query string variables one is format another one is high date another one is supervisory organization so what you have to do is you already added format now let me add high date high date equal to high date equal to so what should i write here which date i have to give i think the date format month mm yy dd mm something like that from where i can get the high date the See, launch parameter launch parameter we already added the launch parameter and we have written an expression which stores the launch parameter high date launch parameter value inside the property so now this property will have that value right whatever the launch parameter user enters while running the integration that value we are storing inside this property now here whenever i want to call the report i have to pass that value and where the value is currently available where the value is currently available in the property in this property so what i have to do is i have to mention that property here 
id equal to property so when we run the integration this when you try to construct this extra path or url so it will see this high data equal to props of high data okay what is the value of the properties okay it will go here we are already reading the launch parameter value and we are storing it here so this value will be used here but this is not the exact syntax if you want to read the value of a property or if you want to read value of property or variable okay this is the format at the rate use this one to read the value this is the syntax at the rate open curly brace and write the name of the property and the end this is the syntax okay now the high data now i have to add for the supervisory organization also if you take the supervisory organization we have something percentage 21 wd something here what is this have you practiced eib inbound integration it's a work day integration id hmm. integration id okay and why it is using work day integration ids okay see supervisory organization is a business object cost center is a business object and in workday we store the data in the form of business objects and whenever you create an instance for that business object it will create or it will have lot of integration ids if you want to refer any instance inside an integration if you want to refer instance of any business object inside the integrations we use integration ids we discussed about these integration ids workday id reference ids during eib inbound so if you cannot recollect please watch that recording if you want to refer instance of any business object inside the integration we use reference ids and what this outbound integration does is whenever we have selected the supervisory organization as abc inc or something okay to refer this supervisory organization it use the wdid work day id of that supervisory organization so if you want to see that go to related actions integration ids view ids see this supervisory organization has two ids one is workday id and this is the value of the workday id and another one is reference id this is the reference id name or type this is the id value and let's see this one 349 this integration see eib outbound when calling the report and when it has to send the value of that supervisory organization it is referring this value using its workday id so what we have to do is if you want to do this same thing from this today integration you have to follow this and before that let's first add the launch parameter okay come here launch parameter i have to add a launch parameter for supervisory organization now guys can you tell me which type of supervisor sorry which type of launch parameter i have to add simple type or reference type it should be reference type because the field launch parameter which you are going to add this should refer the values exist in the tenant it should refer the values 
exist in the tenant so I have to add a reference type so I'm giving name like this supervised organization this is the label or name of the launch parameter okay and here type so what would be the type of this parameter what would be the type hide date the is a date, date field so now we are adding supervisor organization and what should be the type sorry Dini sorry I was talking about the 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 ID right there the work the ID for the organization mm -hmm. see yes yes any guess guys are you familiar with uh, primitive types reference types in java.net class objects okay yes anybody yeah i'm familiar uh, sure. okay so what is the reference type object what is an object Object is an instance of the class. Okay. Now, if I ask you, what is the type of the object? Class type. Class type. And here, coming to workday, we store data in the business objects. Okay. We have a supervisor organization, and its name is ABC. Is this a business object or instance of a business object? instance of a business object instance of which business object supervisory organization so what should be the type of the launch parameter which i'm going to add here supervisory organization if i select the type as the supervisory organization then this launch parameter will refer all these supervised instances of the supervisory organizations exist in the tenant okay so i have to select supervisor organization here click on this whenever i select this one okay so first select the environment because we are going to refer the types and uh, instances exist in the tenant so select the environment i have select the impl and then select class report field name first select the environment to which you have the access and select crf name and name supervisory see it will then it will return all the report fields the launch parameter which I'm going to add it should refer all the supervisory organizations exist in the tenant so I should add the type as the supervisory organization and if you see there are a lot of report fields with the same name with the different descriptions so read this one So this is the name supervisor organization and this is the description so read this one the supervisor organization for the worker as of an effective date return supervisor organization of the worker reporting time see the supervisor organization of the employee in the compensation review process the field allow you to drill into the details of the supervisor organization and access it related actions so you have many but here in our requirement we want to select the supervisor organization means workers supervisor organization because the report will return the workers whose ID is greater than given value and who belong to the given supervisory organization so select this and click on finish if you select next what it will do is if you select next it is displaying all the supervisory organizations exist in the tenant 
see these are the supervisory organizations exist in the sure. tenant mm -hmm. yeah. why we have so many supervisory organizations see these are the see what you selected here this is the type okay and if you click on next it will display all the instances of the type let me select abc no not this one if we go back mm -hmm. see okay mm -hmm. yeah uh -huh. yeah over here we have number of supervisory organizations uh -huh. right with the different description right so based based on our requirement we select okay if you see this one we have supervised organization and here we have supervised organization benefits so read this one what is this that supervisory organization from their primary position huh. so is this what we need no Hey, we need the supervisor organization okay. associated with the workers primary position. Yes, this is what we need See what okay. happens is work they deliver a lot of fields. Okay, and uh, See though the name of the field is same if you take these two fields as it has the benefits Generally, we use these fields in the benefits integrations or benefit related reports Okay, and uh, If you see here Supervisor organ superior can read this one Immediate supervisor immediate superior organization for the workers primary position supervisory organization. Huh. Is this what you need? Do you need the workers supervisor organizations or workers? Immediate superior supervisor organization We don't need this huh. like this based on the I mean this comes by experience and uh, once you go through the description of all these then you will understand okay but if you s remember the business object terminology discussion that we had during the custom reports there what we do is we i mean there what we have seen is we have seen more than one field with the same name but with a different description and different category and when I see this one, okay, immediately I can say, okay, this is something which we use in benefits related integrations or benefits related reports. And I don't use this one. And if I have another uh, field with the same name without benefits and same description, I will use that. Okay, so let me select because it says worker as of effective date, supervisory organization for the worker and what our report will do it will return workers whose hire date is greater than or equal to given date and who belongs to given supervisory organization so i need all these supervisory organizations that are available in the tenant that's why i'm clicking on this if i click i can click on finish okay yes i have done that and here i will select the name required I will explain about these additional options later required now I have added a, a reference type launch parameter and now I have to read that value here for that write another one okay here LP stands for launch parameter dot get get reference data get reference data so here different methods see you have get reference data here one method and another one another method here so get reference data string and it is returning list it is returning list so if you want to read, want to read multiple values select list or if you want to accept only one value select string okay let me select this one I will show you the difference let me select this one here label nothing but name of our supervised sorry name of our launch parameter SUP ORG 
SUPORG. Fine. And next type. See, we have seen here in EIB outbound, what we have observed is whenever we use this organization name, supervisory organization name, it is referring this supervisory organization using integration IDs. Using integration IDs. Right? So now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So normally it's referring through reference ID, right? So why it cannot uh, refer with the name of the supervisory organization see name is not unique okay you can create more than one supervisory organization with the same name but internally they will have different integration ids and reference ids and we uniquely identify the instances based on their ids not on the name is that clear yeah yeah okay. so all the time we use the we have to ID. use the ID, huh? Read, watch that EIB inbound. Okay, there we discuss more about the integration IDs. So I can yeah. use, yes, hey, you cannot refer with the name. You have to use integration IDs. It can be a workday ID or it can be a reference ID. And in this example, they have used the workday ID because of that. See the supervisor organization. This is what we have to add. So come here and here you have to add that one supervisor organization and then they have used the WDID. Usually it is colon. Okay, it should be colon, but that due to that, um, what is that uh, uh, formatting? It displayed like uh, like that, but it is colon colon WD ID they are referring this with the workday ID and what is the workday ID of that supervisor organization this one so they have given like this but if I want to refer this supervisor organization with the reference ID generally we refer or we use reference IDs over workday ID so what I'm doing is I'm using reference ID control C so what is the type of the ID we are going to use? This one. What I have to do is while launching this value here, I have to mention that. I have to mention that. Then what happens is, so when users select the supervised organization and when the integration starts executing, and when we try to read this value so here we are mentioning hey we want to read or we want to refer the supervisory organization selected by the worker with its reference id and the type of the reference id is this you have to mention that you want if you want to refer that using workday id you will use like this workday id I want to refer with reference ID. So I'm using this one and I'm storing this value inside this uh, property called. Let me just use the SO, supervisor organization, like this. And then I have to use that value here. So as this is another parameter and supervisory organization supervisory organization colon which parameter sorry which type we are using organization ID copy this you have to mention that here see supervisory organization here equal to at the rate open and close give the name of the property you have to mention the type while reading the value and you have to mention the type while passing the value while using this one 
finally my string will be like this up to this we will refer the connection string name and etc and here format equals simple XML and high date is this and coming to supervisory organization I'm mentioning hey I'm using this ID to refer the supervisory organization and the property while reading this here also I'm mentioning this one if I deploy and launch the integration it will display the launch parameters user will enter the value for those launch parameters those launch parameter value will be read here and those values will be stored inside these properties and later we are using those values here and we have construct, constructed a report URL which which can pass the these launch parameter values as prompt values and the remaining process is same okay let me run, let me deploy the integration once we run it will be more clear I'm saved and deploy to work day this is the environment yeah this is the integration yeah, I selected this one and click on agree Sure, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you selected the report, the output itself is selected as simple XML, right? So, do we still have to give a simple XML no. in the property? No, too? by by default, it returns work the XML. Okay. 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 Thank by you. default, it will return work the XML. That's why we have to explicitly select. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now, let me go to this integration insist name of the integration is this see if you take this one what I have done is see this is the name of the integration see integration system name see work days uh, WICT underscore Zan under John 18 underscore studio one see we call this as an assembly we don't call this as an integration okay we call this as an assembly the one assembly can have multiple integrations this is one integration this is another integration like how the jar file will have many classes DLL will have many classes you can assume the assembly can have multiple integrations but each integration starts with workday in component so this is the integration I uh, means uh, we have deployed this assembly and this assembly has these two integrations and when I select this one if I go to that one this is the name of the integration so I have to search with this See, I have searched with this. I have opened this integration. And this integration is part of see this clar file or uh, assembly. Okay, we will discuss more about the clar and other stuff later. This I have opened this integration. Remember, if you are trying practicing the same, if you add it, if you add more than one workday in component inside the same project, you can find the integration name under advanced if you take this one this is the integration name this is the integration name and if in tenant if you want to search search with that name I have opened this one if you scroll down under launch parameters you can see launch parameter type is date and this is the supervisory organization Now let's try to run this integration. Integration system, integration launcher schedule. Click on OK. See, now it displayed these two launch parameters high date and supervisory organization, SUPORG. 
these are the names given by us if you click on ok see you cannot run the or launch the integration without giving the providing the value for these two launch parameters because we mark them as mandatory so let's give the values 01 01 2017 and here supervisor organization let me use ABC there is some supervisor organization if you see this ABC it is displayed as a radio button you cannot select more than one supervisory organization because in workday studio when you are reading these values where it is expression see here we have used the uh, simple reference type string string type not as the list type but if you if you observed in the EIB there it is a list box user can select more than one supervisory organization let me click on OK it is running completed with the errors okay and now when I run this integration it completed with the errors and it has given some error so how to troubleshoot this error first as other integrations ABR core connector the first step is go to messages go to messages and see the error message is there any message with error severity error we have this one click on this it has given a lot of error unable to resolve the method so and so so and so it has given so what we have to do is first you have to find where the error occurred and what what went wrong which means and in which component the error occurred and how to resolve that so we will have that discussion tomorrow means in our next session because intentionally I made this mistake because I have to explain about debugging so now we have built the integration if it works fine yes we focus more on how to add the launch parameter and how to read the values but now when we launch the integration some error occurred how to find exactly where the error occurred and what are the values at that point debugging so if any exception occurs or error occurs we debug the integration okay if it is EIB or core connector we don't have that facility okay but workday studio in workday studio you can debug you can debug the workday studio integrations so in our next session we start with the debugging we will discuss how to debug the integration and then we will try to debug this and we will find exactly where the issue is occurred and we will fix that yes any queries Okay. I have shared the certification material so in advance part 1 or part 2 you can find the information about launch RSC with launch parameters Just know how you how to utilize this certification material launch parameters so they take the same report example so the URL which I have shown in EIB they are displaying here they're showing you, you have to pass the launch parameter values based on this query string start here tenant name whatever you see next it is a query string separated by and symbol 
so you have to create the launch parameters and then how to read the launch parameter value and then method see once you add the launch parameter you can see that here the type and launch parameter name and uh, how to launch the integration see now we have launched the integration from the tenant so how to launch the integration which has the launch parameter from workday studio okay there are few points uh, you have to consider so they explain about that and we will we will discuss about these slides in tomorrow's session i will try to launch the integration from workday studio in staff tenant then you will discuss about these two slides and then see same process debugging after that they explain about adding the reference type launch parameter and the mediation context so if you see here they have explained about that launch parameter and reading the launch parameters and then they explain about the mediation context and writing the lp and all those so how we will understand what they are writing the order is not proper here and one more point see don't think we are uh, having the discussion around the reports forget about the reports when i say launch parameter launch parameters are not just to pass the values for the custom report launch parameters help you to or uh, they can be used to accept some input from the user if your integration needs some in from input from the user for that you add the launch parameter and here we discussed about how to read those launch parameter values once you know how to add and how to read the launch parameters later it changes based on your requirement in this example we have to pass those launch parameter values to the custom report and tomorrow you may pass these values to call a custom sorry web service or something else focus on this not on calling the report yes any queries <clears throat> um yeah, sure and then we're gonna see i guess uh, when to launch this in batch mode so the whole thing gets executed uh in a, on a schedule mm, so come again you are talking about scheduling yeah uh, on launching this in a batch mode completely mm -hmm. you know behind the scene uh see, launching as a batch i didn't understand uh, okay so right now we are inputting the parameters right mm -hmm. are, okay are you talking right. about scheduling how how we can pass the values while scheduling the integration exactly exactly when you have it all uh, you know put together in a batch mode and there's no user interaction that's mm. what i was talking about okay right so what is this set value at runtime using class report field you can select this option and class report field so here you can select impl okay and here you will select class report field and let's say Mm, one second do you have any fields or i will search for that let, let me s s find few okay so this is how you can set the values select value at runtime using a class report field you will use this option okay or if you want to give any default value you can use this one and here also select a value at runtime using or you have to give the value let me show you that okay 
and maybe uh, tomorrow when I start launching the integration from the Workday Studio, I will show you that using these values you can do that. Okay. Yes. Any other queries? Okay. Let me pause the uh, recording. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ashwin, um, do you have a minute after you talk to um, um, the other student? Yeah, one second. Let me pause the recording. So after I config now, let's discuss how to practice uh, studio integration in our remote missions. Once you connect to the remote missions, uh, from here after you will see two icons. One is Workday icon and another one is Workday Studio. Open Workday Studio. Then it will ask for the workspace. So for each user who registered for the Workday Studio course, I create a separate workspace. Okay, and you can view all the workspaces in this arrow mark. If you click on this arrow mark, it will display all the workspaces. So select the workspace with, with your name. So if it is a Denny, then select a workspace which looks like this. Denny and click on OK. Okay, uh, currently I'm logged in as administrator. So let me select and click on OK. Then it will open this screen. Okay, And if you want to log into the tenant, if you want to log into the tenant, here click on Studio. If you click on this one, it automatically enter the tenant name, username and password. It will connect automatically. And it will open your workspace. Earlier I have created a test project, so I have this one. But when you open the first time, you don't see this. And the credentials which you entered, it connected to this environment. It's showing a sandbox, ignore this one. It is an implementation tenant, you have connected to this. And once you connect here, you can see all the studio integrations that were already deployed. Guys, please do not touch the existing integration. Okay, as I said, each and every ac action that you do will be logged. Okay, if you try to modify the existing integration, you have to give the explanation again. You, Okay, just to avoid the misusing or unnecessary activities, we have taken this much uh, security. Without sharing username and passwords, we have automatic logins and we have IP blocks, okay, and everything. So if you want to uh, get the code which I have developed now, so connect to the tenant, go to the Cloud Explorer, expand, select the projects that you have, right click and import source. Click on finish. You can import the source code of the uh, up, what is that example that we have developed? Open assembly, and you can view those examples. Once you are done, simply close this studio and log out of your session.